Welcome to St. John Presbyterian Church. My name is Alan, and I'm the pastor here, and it's my pleasure to have you all in worship with me this morning, whether you're here live or watching on the rebroadcast on YouTube. We're in the midst of our Women's Great Banquet weekend, so if you heard music coming in, that was our women singing, and we've had great music all through the weekend and great talks and great times of fellowship, so... And thank you all for those of you who helped out to serve a meal or came and prayed or did other things that helped support this weekend. And there'll be more coming up in the spring for you all to consider joining. If you haven't been on one of these weekends, they are certainly life-changing and life-renewing. Today we will be recognizing our graduates as part of worship, so we have our High school graduate Ellen here today, and we'll be doing a special presentation for her as we honor also our college graduates as well. Communion is open to everyone. We'll be processing down this aisle and returning from this aisle. You're asked to come and take a piece of bread and a cup of wine and eat that and drink that as you come through the line as you return to your seats. And that's all the announcements I have this morning. Does anyone else have any other announcements? Seeing none, we'll invite Charlie to start worship with his prelude.
Good morning. Please stand if you're able. Join me in the call to worship. The day of Pentecost is here. God's children have gathered in this place. We are transformed into God's family by God's spirit joining with ours. Come, spirit of adoption, and open our hearts to our sisters and brothers. Come, spirit of peace, and calm our trembling hearts. Come, breath of God, and overturn our conventional lives. Join me in a confession of sin. God of wisdom and understanding, have mercy upon us as we confess our sin. Your children are scattered. Language keeps them apart. Forgive us for this The good news is that God forgives us. Forgive others and forgive yourselves. Thank you. First reading is from Acts 
2, 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jew and proselytes, Cretans and, <coughs> Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But, but others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. This ends the first reading. Send his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there. Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know
can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I Thank you, gentlemen. Our reading continues with Acts chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's the word of God for the people of God. God. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us ears to hear you. Give us minds to know you. Give us mouths to praise you. Give us hearts to love you. And give us lives to serve you. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And all God's children said. We are told that the disciples were all gathered in one place. And they were all together in this house. And then there came a sound like a violent wind, which shook and filled the house. Now the word for wind in Greek is pneuma, and pneuma can be translated as wind, spirit, or breath. So what we have is this image of the spirit filling the house with a violent wind, And it's as if God breathed into the disciples. I like to consider it God's breath because then it reminds us of creation. When God formed Adam from the dust, the first thing that God did to make Adam alive was to breathe into him. God's breath brings life to all of us. And in this instance, on Pentecost Sunday, so long ago, God breathed life into all the disciples, creating the church. God breathed life into the church that first Pentecost and gave it the ability to do what the church was meant to do. So God breathed new spiritual life into these disciples who had felt all but dead. Yes, they had seen Jesus rise from the dead, but they had just seen him ascend to heaven, and they were alone as they had been before. 
and they looked for help. And God came and breathed new life into them, breathed spiritual life into them. Sometimes when we're feeling a little dead inside, sometimes when we're exhausted, we need that breath of God in us to bring us back to life. We need what God gives us as a second wind. God breathes that life into us still with God's spirit. Again, when we're feeling dead, when we're feeling that we've been weighed down by chains, God breathes this life into us using Holy Spirit to renew our hearts, to renew our faith, to renew our spirits, and to renew our lives. So the first lesson on Pentecost today is God breathed the Holy Spirit into believers, bringing new life to them. And that Holy Spirit is the second wind when we need it. We are also told that a tongue of fire rested on each of them, opening up the Spirit to all believers rather than just a select few. That fire is also representative of the Spirit, and it talks about the kindling of our hearts. So just as God brings new life into us with that second wind, so does God ignite a fire in us using the Holy Spirit. When we've lost that zest for living, when we've lost that umption to get up in the morning, God lights a fire in us, and that fire is Holy Spirit. But it's important to note that the Holy Spirit rested on every single one of them. Because in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit either rested on Israel as a whole, or it rested on select leaders that were selected for a certain purpose, like kings and prophets. There wasn't this understanding that the Holy Spirit was something that resided in each believer individually. But the Bible tells us that that tongue of fire rested on every single one of them. It reminds us that the Spirit is not for a select few. The Spirit is not for those who have special gifts or special gifts of speaking or singing or painting, but the Spirit rests on each and every one of us, and it reminds us that we are all gifted in our own way, that everyone has a gift inspired by the Spirit to contribute to the life of the church. Holy Spirit is not just for the select few, it's for everybody. Everybody deserves a share of this Spirit, and it is freely given by God above. And it's used to ignite our hearts so that we might use our gifts in service to the Lord. So the second lesson of Pentecost Sunday is that a tongue of fire rested on each of them opening the spirit to all believers, not just a select few or a chosen people, but everyone. At the sound of the wind or at the sound of the disciples speaking in their various tongues, a crowd gathered because each person heard the gospel spoken in their native tongue. This was, as our confession of sin hinted at, a reversal of the Tower of Babel. The story of Babel goes that the people came together, and because they had one language, they could cooperate. And they were building this tower that would reach to the heaven and rival God. And God decided to thwart this project by confusing the language of the people. And this is how we get the origin story of the many languages that we speak. But the truth is, sometimes we speak the language, but we still do not communicate. We all speak the same language, but sometimes there is no communication between us because we don't listen to 
one another. That's the miracle of Pentecost is that the people heard and they listened to the gospel that was being spoken. They listened to one another. Yes, there was the miracle of the disciples being able to speak in these native languages so that they could communicate, but the people listened and were moved by the message. We need to learn to communicate better as a people. We need to learn to say what we mean and mean what we say. We need to listen to different opinions. We need to listen to different views. We need to learn to listen to what the other person is saying to us. Sometimes a person might be crying out for help. Sometimes a person might be trying to share what they really believe. But we don't listen because we are biased. We don't listen because we are closed off. We don't listen because we are too concerned with the noise of our own lives that we don't consider the opinions or the views that are valid in the other person standing before us. Just think if we could get our government to communicate with one another, what could be done? And everyone was involved in this miracle. The names that John read so well describe cities and areas that were scattered throughout the Roman Empire. So the lesson is that the gospel was for everyone. It didn't matter where you were from. It didn't matter what part of Rome you were from. It didn't matter if you were from the coast or from the desert. The gospel was for you. And that's what God wanted to show these people is that it didn't matter where you were from. It didn't matter if you were from this side of the tracks or the other side of the tracks. The gospel was for you. It was for everybody. Just as the spirit was for everyone, so was the gospel. And we must realize that as we take the gospel out with us, that there is no one that is not included in the good news of Jesus Christ. That everyone, no matter where they're from or what their background is, is deserving of this good news that God has given us. And it is for us to share it from north to south, from east to west, to the people in the city, to the people in the country. This good news is for everyone. And that is what the Spirit inspires us to do still today, is to proclaim that gospel to everyone they meet, no matter where they are from. It doesn't matter where you're from. God's family is big enough for everyone. That's part of this story of Pentecost, is that everyone was included now in God's family. It didn't matter if you were just a Jew from a particular area. This gospel was for everyone. God's family included everyone from the country to the towns, from the coast to the desert, and everywhere in between. Because that's how big God's family is. It has room for everyone, just as the Spirit has a place in everyone's life. Peter explains what's happening by quoting scripture. And the scripture he quotes comes to us from the prophet Joel. And he said that these were the last days when God would pour out God's spirit upon all people, even slaves, and they shall prophesy. The last days were those that were considered to be of the messianic age. The last days were the idea that when the Messiah came, 
it would be in the last days when all would be judged according to their deeds. But the important part of Joel's prophecy is that men and women, sons and daughters, would receive this spirit and they would prophesy. And Joel is specific in saying even slaves, men and women, would prophesy too. The gospel isn't just for the elite few. It isn't for the middle class or the upper class. It's for the poor as well, and perhaps the poor more importantly, because Jesus came to bring good news to the poor. And it was the poor that responded to his message because he often spoke of how roles would be reversed, how the last should be first, how the least should be the greatest. And this was something that resonated with those who were living in poverty. This resonated with those that were indeed literally slaves in the Roman Empire. The gospel, again, is for everyone. It's for everyone regardless of where they're from, but it's also for everyone regardless of what their income status are. It doesn't matter how much you have in your bank account. It doesn't matter if you think God has blessed you with wealth. Instead, what matters is that we are wealthy because of the gospel, that all of us are recipients of this great gift that is worth a thousand treasures. And the poor especially need to hear the good news that they are part of God's greater plan for this world. For we still have the poor among us today. We still have those who find it hard to meet paycheck to paycheck. And they need the good news that God is with them, that God will provide for them that God is for them. Finally, Peter said that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The goal of Pentecost was to present the gospel in a way that everyone might be saved, that everyone who called upon the Lord would receive God's salvation. Salvation was considered to be the product or the, the gift for a chosen people. But what Peter was saying is that the gospel was for everyone, that anybody who called upon the Lord would be saved. It didn't matter if you were a Jew or a Gentile. Again, it didn't matter where you were from or how much you had in your pocket. The gospel of salvation was for everybody. And it's not for us to discriminate who receives the gospel. It's for us to share the gospel with everyone that we meet. Because sometimes God's salvation is dependent on us. Because how will people know the good news if we don't tell them? How can people know about salvation if we don't tell them about our Savior, Jesus Christ. For there are many out there who don't know about salvation or who don't know who Jesus really is. There's a lot of people out there who would say that Jesus will save you only if you do this or do that, only if you meet this criteria. But the gospel of salvation is for everyone. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are. It matters that God has chosen you and that God loves you. And it is our responsibility to share the gospel with others. It's our responsibility to make friends, to be friends, and to bring Jesus to our friends. And so we are to be friends of the world because it is the world that needs to be saved. And yes, Christ did it upon the cross, but he needs us to tell people about it. 
And that's what Pentecost reminds us to do, is that the Spirit ignited a fire. The Spirit gave voice to the disciples so they could tell everybody in every language about Jesus and what he had done for them. And we are empowered by the same Spirit to be, yes, evangelists. I know as Presbyterians, sometimes we shy away from that word. But we do have a responsibility to let people know what sort of difference Christ has made in our life, what difference he has made in the life of this world, and what difference he can make in the lives of everyone that we meet. And that should be our desire. Today we learn that Holy Spirit is God breathing new life into us, giving us that second wind when we feel like we can't move on. It's God igniting a fire in us when it seems like our fire has gone out. It is learning to speak the gospel in a way that people can understand. It's learning how to communicate. It's learning how to communicate our faith to people, but also what we believe to be true about Jesus, about how he loves everyone, about how his grace is for everyone, about how he reached out to the outcast and brought them into God's family, about how he reached out to those on the margins and made them feel included. Because this is the good news we have to share today with the world and we must share with the world, that Jesus is not some judge pointing fingers at others. Jesus is the Lord and Savior of all, and everyone who calls on him shall and can be saved. So let us embrace this spirit today. Let us be renewed and have our fire rekindled as a church. And let them know what sort of a church family we have here. How there is welcome in this place. How there is room for everyone in our family. And how it doesn't matter where you come from or how much money you have or what sort of life you're living. What matters is that we have a life, we live together, and that life is in Jesus Christ. So let us go and share with the world the gospel so that we might be a part of Christ's continual saving of this world because this world needs to be saved. This world needs to be saved from itself because we don't communicate, because we don't get along, because we don't see eye to eye. And we see that as bad things instead of seeing it as the great diversity that we see on Pentecost Sunday. All these people gathered together, huddled around, eager to hear this message from these seemingly drunk apostles. Let us be intoxicated with the Spirit as we leave here and share in our own way what the gospel means to us and what it means for the entire world. Amen.
affirm our faith this morning using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resur sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we recognize our graduates among us who have worked so hard in their studies to get to this place and who have great futures ahead of them. We lift up Kirsten Bullock, who graduated with her PhD from U of L. We lift up Ryan Plunkett, who graduated from the Indiana School of Medicine. We lift up Luke Trueblood, who graduated from U of L and Madison Trueblood, who graduated from IUS. And especially today, we recognize our high school graduate, Ellen Eiton. And I'm going to ask her to come forward at this time. Do you have a speech prepared? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, we just wanted you to know how much as a church family we are proud of you and your accomplishment and how proud of you we are of you of working so hard in your studies. And we wish you all the best in the future. And it is my honor to present you with this gift that is from your church family to say congratulations and all the best in your future. You're welcome. Let us pray. Almighty God, I lift up our graduates, and we can confidently say as a church that our future is bright because we've seen these young people grow and watch them over the years become amazing young men and women. And we know that they are going to be a part of changing the world for the better. So use their gifts, use their passion, use their wonderful dispositions, and use their lives to impact the lives of others wherever they find themselves in the future. We pray all this through Christ and in his name. Amen. May the Lord of Pentecost be with you. People of Pentecost, lift your hearts to the Spirit moving in your midst. Daughters and sons of the Holy One, lift your joy to our God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for creating us in your image. We thank you for calling us as a special people. We see the story of Israel and how you saved them from the bondage of slavery by leading them out of Egypt and into the wilderness where they were challenged, where they grew, where they got frustrated with you, but you never gave up on them. You guided them with a pillar of fire. You guided them with a pillar of cloud by day. You put up with them even when they turned their backs on you. When they created the, fat, the golden calf, you forgave them. 
and you gave them the Ten Commandments to help pattern their lives for a life of holiness. When they found themselves in exile, you sent your prophets to be voices of truth in a time of great despair, and your message was to return to me. When that message didn't take hold, you sent your very son, Jesus Christ. He was the word in the beginning, and that word became flesh and dwelt among us. He showed us how to live a life of compassion. He showed us how to speak out for justice. He showed us how to serve the marginalized. He showed us how to proclaim good news to the poor and release to the captives. Most of all, he came to perform that one sacrifice that was needed for our atonement, that was needed to make us right with you so that we might stand worthy in your presence. It is by his death and resurrection that we are saved, and it is for us to let the world know that good news that we share in our lives. Holy Spirit, unite our hearts together. Bring us together as your people as you bring us closer to God. Renew our fellowship with Jesus and with one another as we come to this table to be built up and strengthened in a life of grace. Holy Spirit, anoint these gifts of the earth and of the vine and make them the means by which we embrace your grace and by which we respond to it with a life of Christian action. Feed us, renew us, and strengthen us for the journey ahead. We pray all this through Christ, who with God the Father and Holy Spirit reigns in the glory of the power that is love. Amen. On the night of his betrayal, arrest, and incarceration, Jesus shared a meal with his disciples. And as part of that meal, he took bread. And after giving thanks for it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Take, eat, and do this, remembering me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took a cup. And after giving thanks for it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink, and do this remembering me. As often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim Christ's saving death until he comes. My body is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats this bread and drinks from this cup will live in me, and I will live in them. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
join me in the prayer after the supper. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. may be seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the sound of laughter. We thank you for the sound of children. We thank you for feeding us with your body and blood. Renew us in your spirit so that we might walk in newness of life. Creator God, you made this earth and all of its creatures, from the raccoons and the porcupines to the robins in their nest. You made this world of beautiful flowers and of trees that are bright and green and the warm sunshine upon our skin. Redeemer God, you came to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. You came to save us from sin and death. You came to make us right with God. You came to show us that there's nothing that we could do that could separate us from the love of God and that there's nothing in our lives that can do so either. Holy Spirit, today we especially remember your breath within us, your fire within us, and the message you've given us to proclaim. We pray for this church. We pray that you strengthen us in number and in spirit, that you help us continue to live out your mission in and through these walls. We thank you for the opportunity to serve our community, and we thank you for the opportunity to host these great banquets. And Lord, we pray for our lay director, Sherry Bannett. We pray for our assistants, Shauna Cherry and Beth White. We pray for our spiritual directors, Kelly Hessig, Benita Cadel, myself, Melissa Lopp, and Rhonda Allstott. We pray for our table leaders, Amanda Wiley, Emily Detrow, Carrie James, Anya Evinger, Betsy Gim, Natalie Province, Nancy Pridemore, Jackie Owen, Angie Fletcher, Marcy Hutchins. We thank you for our kitchen crew, Cheryl Kaiser, Bonnie Bratcher, and Samantha Flisspart. We thank you for Adrian Norville, for Marilyn Kington Meyer, for Tamara Browning, for Matthew Gordon, and for Rudy Owen, all who led us in music this weekend. We pray for our guests, Tina Algren, Cora Flisspart, Stephanie Mauser, Pat Peterson, Caroline Strickland, Harriet McCormick, and Leveda Hutchinson. 
We thank you for the opportunity to open up the spirit to them and to show them agape love in this place. And we thank you for all who have tirelessly served meals, shared in prayers, and other ways of supporting this weekend. We pray for our nation and its leaders. Indeed, we pray for a spirit of communication and cooperation so that together they might make important decisions that might affect our school children, that might affect ourselves, that might affect our aging population, that might affect our world relations, that might affect the way we are seen on the world stage and the way we are viewed as a nation. We pray for those who are weak and suffering in this world. We pray for those who are experiencing famine and disease. We pray for those who are without hope. We pray for those who are without joy. We pray for those who are battling mental, physical, and spiritual illness. We pray for those who have given up on you and ask that you let them know that you've not given up on them. We pray for those who are in relationship struggles. <clears throat> we pray for those who are faced with self-doubt and self-loathing. We pray for those who battle addiction and those who are experiencing sobriety, either recent or many years in. Lord, I pray for those who need your healing. I pray for the one here who needs your wisdom. I pray for the one who feels down on their luck and that you give them hope. I ask that you strengthen our trust in you so that when we falter, we might know that you have a plan and that you are currently acting that plan and that all things you do are for the greater good. And now, Lord, I invite my brothers and sisters to offer any other prayer requests they have to you. We'll do so in silence, but Lord, give us wisdom to know that you answer prayers in your ways and give us patience knowing that you answer prayer in your time. Hear us as we pray. Now together let us stand and sing the prayer that Jesus taught us.
let us give as we are able in gratitude to God as our ushers come forward to collect the offering. Almighty God, thank you for the greatest gift that you've given us in Jesus Christ. Accept these gifts that we offer you and use them to encourage, equip, and inspire the world around us as through our mission we might show Christ's love. We pray this in his name. Amen.
join me in a prayer of the day. God, our creator, earth has many languages, but your gospel proclaims your love to all nations in one heavenly tongue. Make us messengers of the good news that all the world may unite in one song of praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the light of Christ surround you. May the love of Father God enfold you. May the power of Holy Spirit protect you. And may the presence of God watch over you. And remember, wherever you are, God is and all will be well. Go in peace. Come, Holy Spirit, dark is the hour. We need your filling, your love and your mighty Church today. Revive the church today. Revive the church today.